All right, we're gonna change the brakes in this beast. Or do the front brakes. And I'll show you how to do the sensor, get everything going. First, we need to get in the car, pull the emergency brake, jack the car all the way up. You wanna put it in off-road mode. And then we're gonna put the jack underneath of it, jack it up, put the uh, jack stand under it, just in case it falls. And then we'll start tearing everything apart. Okay, so I lost the beginning footage of this. Okay, first you're going to pull this off. This is a 10 millimeter. And you want to un unlatch this. This is the speed sensor. Mine's kind of scraped off. You want to pop that off of there. And then to remove this from the pin this one goes on the inside and then you want to remove this one too from here you're going to find out later it's going to be a lot easier this is the speed sensor so we'll do that later this pulls off this pulls off what i'm doing right now i'm using a 13 millimeter to get these bolts off and I'm using 1116. Uh, I think a 15 millimeter would work too. And what we're doing is pulling these nuts out, these bolts, to remove the caliper. So there's the one bolt. Now the other bolt. Other bolt. Now the caliper can come out. I'm going to hang, use this, hang up here. I'll show you back here. You see that? Okay, hang that up there. I'm going to remove this. And this is why you pull this off right here. So you can take this and you can hang it right up there like that. All right, so now we're going to start on this. First thing you need to do is we need to remove this bolt right here. This holds the pin on. I'm going to do it with an impact. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in there. Just need to vibrate it a little bit. And now I'm going to hit the impact on it. If you don't have an impact, you can use an um, impact hammer. I have one of them. I just don't have the tip that goes on this. coming off all right I have a slight problem freaking things making a loud noise slight problem I, it boogered up the inside it would not come out so what I did was I'm gonna use the air hammer and I put it in I make little grooves on both sides And then I jackhammer it. And spin it around. So until it comes out. Can you see what I'm doing? All I'm doing is drizzling out the outside. Spinning it around. All 
I'm not worried about this, the, the outside, because I'm going to replace the whole thing. So I'm just trying to get it off right at the moment. Now, that's still stiff. So, let me deal with this, get it off, and then I'll bring you back. So, beating it to crap. Looks like this. Looks horrible. I have to order a new one, but right now I'm going to go ahead and install it, and I'll cut to me actually putting it in when we get to that part. And now we get to the good part. Both of these are spinning. That's a good thing. Let's go ahead and do these first. We'll pull the bottom one first. Pop it out. And they use copper glue or copper grease. I don't like that. So we're going to pop it out. Clean it up. So it's cleaned up. Now, see where this one's got the little lines? Three little lines for the oil. Now we pull the top one. Pull the rubber off. See the copper grease again? We're going to clean off the copper grease. It's copper anti-seize is what it is. And they're using it as grease. And that's not how that's supposed to work. You don't use anti-seize as grease. I'm going to clean these out right here. Get a towel. I'm just going to spray this out. I don't understand this. Copper grease. Copper anti-seize. Alright. Let's clean this out. I should have bought a new copper. A new rubber. If I'd have known this is copper grease on this, I would have just bought new rubbers. I keep calling it copper grease copper anti-seize sorry about the neighbor mowing the grass all right there's one done this one spray it Get this. You guys won't have to do this. If it's regular real grease, you don't have to clean this out. The main reason why I'm doing this is because it's got copper anti-seize in it. And it shouldn't have. Copper anti-seize is for high temperatures. That's great. But it's really not a grease. It's just an anti-seize agent. You want something like a grease in there. I use this stuff for my brake calibers. Okay, when they go back in, you put the, the side with the little tube. This little, see this little area? You want that on the outside. I know I'm wrong I'm wrong you want the big the big part no you want the small part
you want the part that has the little tip right there. You want that to go in. It doesn't make a difference which one it is. This one doesn't have a tip. Alright, so then this one goes up here. Goes in the bottom. Okay. Now, people are going to say, this one, one goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. What I'm going to tell you is that, basically, this goes on the top. Doesn't make a difference where you are, what you're doing, this goes on the top. The reason why is because this has space in it to wiggle. This doesn't wiggle. If you put it in there, it's solid. Doesn't wiggle. This one wiggles. The main reason why this one wiggles is so that when you change your brake pads, you take your calipers off. You take your pin out of this one, you pull your pin out of this one, and you leave the pin in this one. And the rubber one always is on top. You can take your caliper and swing it upward and you can replace the brake pads real quick and easy. Let me show you here on this. Let's see, no, it goes in like that. This one goes in like that. And you can take your caliper and swing it up like this when you change your brake pads. That's why this one up here is a little looser. And from what I've always seen is you take the rubber one because that one causes the looseness and the rubber one always goes to the top. So if the brake pads on this side, then that would be on the top. The hard, the hard one will always be on the bottom. And that's how you remember which one's what. On a Land Rover, same thing. The rubber part goes on the top. And then the hard one goes on the bottom. This one right here does not wiggle. Once you get it in there, see it? There's no wiggle. This one get, it wiggles back and forth. The reason why is the caliper comes up. Like I showed you. But that's the only reason why that's the way it is. And this also, the rubber on here, leave the rubber. And putting anti-seize on there, uh, if this heats up, It'll expand, and if it expands, there's no good anymore. And the rubber is there to lessen the vibration noise because of the fact that it's sloppy. The reason why it's sloppy is so that people can do the change of the brake pads without, and it works on every vehicle. So if we get onto the back brakes, and the back brakes are flipped the other way, it's still the top one is the one that you want to change because the brake caliper comes up. So remember, all the ones that have the rubber ends always go in the top. And it doesn't make a difference which side. People say it's the leading side and the, the downside. Just remember, it's always the one on the top because you want to swing the caliper up and the, the pin that needs to be available to it is the one that's uh, up on top the sloppy one okay so I put green grease on this and then I put it in there and I wiggle wiggle it around as you're putting it in and it'll get all the grease in there once you get the grease in there, go in and pull up on this, pull up on the rubber here, and you're burping it. Once it's burped, it should stay in there like that. It should, if you don't burp, it'll stick out. And this one, you want to do a lot down at the bottom, because that's exactly why all those little uh, cuts are in the, in the shaft is because of that. 
But yeah, it's, uh, I don't understand why people get this stuff wrong. It's easy to remember. Okay, then you take this one, and this one's stiff, so you have to wiggle it. Wiggle it back and forth. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't put enough on the top. This one you want to put a lot on the very top. See the very top right there? You want to put a lot on the very top. All right, so now you put it in, and you put it in and you wiggle it. You just wiggle. You hear that goop? And you wiggle it all the way in. And then you take the rubber, push it all the way back, you wiggle it all the way in. And then once it gets in, you pull back this rubber until it burps. See how it's burping? That's air. Once that air comes out, and then you wipe it. And now it's got enough grease. Now we move on to the rest. Brake pads coming out. Look at that. They're wore down. Look at that. They even got bad place in the middle. Now see how low they got down there? It has not eaten my sensor yet. It has not scratched through my sensor to trip it. This bolt is a 21. And you got to get at these points, all these points, in order to fit back here. You can't use a six-sided. So basically, off and out. This one and out. All right. So you just pull these out. Nothing to put on them. Dd. It's out. Now pull these off. Okay. Now you take these, pop these off. Throw them in the trash, and you take a file. And what you want to do is file this stuff that's in here. So you're trying to get all that dust and anything big that's in there. And get on the other side, do the same thing. And we're going to spray it. We're going to do a little bit more. Okay, now we do the other side. These are actually pretty good. Not rusted up. So you want to do this on every brake pad you do. I have too big of a file, but I like using this one. And then I do a little bit on the tops. And a little bit on the tops of tops. Spray it out a little bit. That looks good. See that? Looks good. What you all you're trying to do is make this flat. Like on both sides. If you make them flat then these will fit in there. They'll pop right in. Of course, that one has to be moved over. The, uh, these will pop right in. And then that's what you want. You want a clean area. See, just like that. 
clean area on both sides. Let me get the other one in. Once they're popped in, all the way to the bottom, then you're done with this part. Let's move that to the side. And then we're going to remove this. Ugh. All right, there are multiple ways you can do this. If you don't have any hand tools or uh, electric tools, you can just file this. The all, all you're trying to do is get that stuff off this, off that. Any big stuff that's going to get in the way, you want to get that off. And anything around this little rim right here, you want to get clean. So when it fits up there, it fits great. Now, you can do it with a file. You can do it with air tools. Just put it in there. Alright, if you don't want to do it with air tools, you can use a, a drill, copper brush, and just run it. That will clean it off. So basically you want to do that. Because I don't want to do with this. I can't find my fluid film. So what I'm going to do is just use anti-seize. And go around the outside. And I'm not going to put a whole lot. I'm just going to coat it. Use everything that I got already out here. Just coat it. Coat the little threads there. Basically, I do that so I don't have to deal with it later on trying to remove it by rust building up. All right, put it on. If you put your finger where this, if you put your finger where this is, you want to line it up with the bolt head. Okay, since we got this all on, you don't need to spray this because this is zinc coated. Zinc coated doesn't have an oil film on it. If you have an oil film on it, you need to spray it and get the oil film off. But this is zinc plated, so it doesn't have an oil feel to it. So, when you put the brakes on and you start uh, hitting the brakes, this will all get scraped off. That's how that one works. The new stuff, like the zinc stuff, you don't have to uh, wipe it off like the old stuff. The old stuff, it has a film on it. Now this is, people are going to have a fit, but I always grease up these, these joints right here. Yeah, I know, you can get dirt in there and then they stop everything up. But I always put a light thing of grease right there it's just how I do it if you don't like it don't do it on yours but so now you put this on
see this bolt right here I'm putting this bolt in and then the other bolt goes in the top one pull it out a little bit so it matches hand tighten so that you know where the threads are till they go in put on has to come off your brake caliber once it comes off your brake caliber then it goes up here and it latches here you need to undo that you can't see it has to unlatch from here then you unlatch it from here and then you go up underneath here let me see if I can show you where it is it, it goes right here it's right there you got to pop that out let me pop that out of there once that's popped out of there all this comes up out of here like that and then you gotta pop it out of here it's another connection and then it goes back here okay Can you guys see this right here? No. You guys can't. Can you guys see that right here? No, you can't. Okay, can you see that right there? Right there is the connector for this. You squeeze the bottom, pop it out, and then this pops out of there somehow oh it just slides out it slides this way and then you disconnect it by just pushing the pin and you end up with this take that all out got one of these part number Pull the top off. No, that's the whole top. So pull that back down. Ouch. Yeah, that's the clip. Sorry you guys can't see this. Maybe you can. All right, once I clipped it together, then I'm gonna pull this out. This little piece right here goes into this piece right here. There it is, slides in. And now we're gonna go up here. Can you guys see this? Right there, right there, there's a joint, push up there, and boom, that's on the top. You guys see that? Spot there. Then we're going to take this, we're going to feed it down through here. Just keep feeding it, feeding it through. I see this little, this little piece right here. We're going to shove that one right up in there. And that's on there. Now we take this, we clip this on there. And we go down farther. Clip this on there. And we're going to do that one a little bit later once we move the caliper over. Now, 
gonna move the caliper out. You guys see it there? We're gonna clean up this spot right here and on the back side of these so that there's nothing impeding the way. Check the other side. And we're gonna that dust out of there. Alright, so we put this in there. Press. And the weight usually goes on, yeah, the weight usually goes on the outside. Make sure it slides in real easy. I guess you guys need to be over here where you can see. See how it slides in and out real easy? That's what it's supposed to do. The inside one goes like this, slides in and out real easy this is what you're going to attach this to you're going to put it right there you're going to put it right there but you can't put it now you got to wait till the caliper is on but it's going to go right in there right in that groove right there and then as it's wearing down as it wears down See a little bump there on the top? The bump starts rubbing up against this rotor and it starts wearing it down. When it wears it down far enough, it'll set the sensor inside the truck. But this one has, this is what the new one's supposed to look like. It goes right there, but you can't put this on until later. Ah, oh. oh yeah, okay. So, let's put the caliber on, roll it down, and then put the caliber actually in its spot. I got new bolts. So the bolts go in, hand tight. And when I was telling you about this being uh, wiggled, it's so that people can go like this and change their brake pads and then they can go back and, and go like that and they don't have to remove the whole caliper to do it. Okay, these bolts don't use an air hammer, air tool on it. Just fasten it by hand. the 10 millimeter goes right here and it's a little tight because I have the wheel turned Now, the big one goes in the big hole. That's your speed sensor. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's a speed sensor. Goes into the big hole. That's speed sensor right there. And this one goes into this hole. Yeah, this one goes into this hole. Just like that. around like that this goes around that K 
cap goes on. And you guys see that? Yeah. Cap goes on. And then this. And then this. Goes right in there. So it don't wiggle anymore. And that's in. It's a lot of wind. So we got this back together. Everything's back together on that thing. We're gonna get rid of this. We gotta get grabber hook. We're gonna swing the tire back around. Okay, first thing to do is you want to jack up the car. Then you're going to want to, and then we're going to torque the wheels. There's a hundred pounds per inch I think it's like a hundred and three but hundreds close enough for me one Okay, now we got the truck back on. The wheels are torqued down. All the bolts have been torqued down. After you get done that, you, after you finish the other side, everything's the same on the other side except for the brake wear sensor. Or it's only on the driver's side and it's only on the passenger rear side. So after you get done, get in the truck. After you get in the truck, you're gonna want to start it. You want to start the truck and you want to pump the pedals a few times. Before even starting the truck, you want to pump the pedals at least three times. All right, once you get that, then you should be able to start it up and then you pump a couple more times and boom, you're done. And then you can drive it down the road. But make sure you pump this a couple times before you start. Or it's going to be a really bad experience. But besides that, it's all it takes to do front brake pads and change the rotors. So now you can do it. It's not that hard. This applies for the Land Rover 3, the Land Rover, or the LR4. That's the Discovery 3 and the Discovery 4. They're exactly the same vehicles. Uh, just on different locations um, just the steering wheels on the other side but essentially the same truck all right so I'll see you guys later hope you learned something 
Bye. Okay. Let's break in the the brakes. We're just going to drive here. And we're going to get some distance. And then we're going to hit the brakes. So you don't want to stop completely. You drive a little farther. Basically, you want to do this like three, four times. That's all there is to it. Yeah, they're going to tell you you need to go mile, so many miles per hour and all this stuff. It's basically, if it's getting better, it's getting better. I'll do it one more time, no, two more times, and then that'll be it. And then your brakes should be fine after that. You're basically just taking off the coats of the road and the brakes. It seems to brake pretty good to me. All right, let's go down one more time. Tell me if the brakes feel pretty good. I'll get up. I'm up to 25 miles an hour. It stopped. All right. Now, and that's the breaking in procedure. One thing I wanted to tell you is you need to keep an eye on your brake fluid when you do it my way, where you push the caliber back in, you're pushing brake fluid back up in here. And if you've ever added brake fluid to your vehicle before you've done that, then your brake fluid will be higher. Like mine right now is probably up to about right here on it. And it's actually been leaking out. I'm going to suck some of this brake fluid out because right now I'm too high. But you need to keep an eye on this. Once you do, if you do your brake, if you do your brake calipers and your brake pads all in one shot and you do them all and you pump all your brakes down so they grab at the beginning then you may you put in enough brake fluid to reach the max all right after that you do not add any more brake fluid i don't care if you come six months from now as long as you haven't changed your brake pads do not add any brake fluid don't add it because it will go down and you can actually tell by how low your brake fluid is how bad your brake calipers actually are how much brake pads you have left you'll have to figure this out but you can figure this out pretty easy but once you do that then it'll go down and you leave it be you don't ever top this off unless at the beginning when everything's there all right Bye.